Oh my gosh, LCK and, and LCS both incredible dominant performances today at Worlds. We're celebrating with an NA Korea matchup uh, on Hotline League episode 192. Uh, thank you so much to Game Fuel and Alienware for sponsoring the show. We love them both so much. Uh, and man, it's been a great day. It's the first day of groups and uh, there's a lot to talk about. Mark Zimmerman is here, my constant co-host. How's it going, Mark? It's going go okay. You're awake. I'm awake. Uh, I only slept for like uh, like a little half hour nappy poo. Oh really? Um, I thought you were gonna conk. You were like I. So I've been up since since then, and I did I did a whole stream and talked about the games and all that stuff. And you're like, I gotta go sleep. You only slept for thirty minutes. Yeah, it was my excuse to hang up on you. To be honest. Well, uh, that's great. <laughs> Anything else you did today that was good? Uh, I pulled on the the Genshin banner because I wanted all the four stars, and I got all of them. But I had to go into the my pity, so yeah. I was trying to build up to eighty pity for the next like banner I actually wanted the main character on. And then I was like, "Fuck it, I'll take the fifty fifty and hope I don't get Kakomi." And then I got that stupid mermaid fucker. Um, but I ended up getting all the four stars. So, so okay. uh, w while you were uh, asleep. Uh, I streamed and after I was done time at worlds and like premiering all my interviews and stuff, uh, I did a Genshin stream and people were subbing to, to get me to pull. So I did like five or six pulls and I got Dialuk and Kakomi off of the, the banner. So yeah. Did you, did you pity or did you just get that lucky? I think that Kakomi was, or no, Dialuk was the pity role. And then two rolls after that, I got Kakomi. So hmm. yeah. Yes. Genshin. Yes. Chronicler, do you ever play Genshin? You're familiar with it at least, right? Uh, I, I'm, I'm very familiar. Atlas is uh, probably the best Genshin Impact yeah, player like... in the world. Really? He's, actually... the... <laughs> he's insane. Yeah, he's, <laughs> I, don't, I one... don't play. Is the one thing I said in uh, like the Slack stuff was yeah. like, what is everyone's AR rank in Genshin? <laughs> this fucking Atlas is like 58. And I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's, 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 he's a really like, he's a, he's a good gamer. He's uh when it he's comes one to of those Genshin, guys that, he's he's basically challenger. Is he one of those guys like there's there's always uh like there's a couple of people that I know like Link is like this, uh Double Lift is like this where it's just like they're always going to be good at any game that they play because they're just gonna get heavily invested and they just naturally are, are pretty good. I, I see. You said he's a good gamer. It made me think of that. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I think Atlas is just like really good at at like grind at like RPGs. I don't think it's everything. Like, I don't, because we played League together and like a bunch of other games as well, right? But I think just when it comes to games like Genshin or like role playing games where you can like break the game, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's where he shines. He's that's gonna where he's uh, the best gamer out of all of us for sure. Nice. Well, glad to have it. This is your, I'm not crazy, right? This is the first time you've ever been on the show. Uh, yeah, indeed. Yeah, it you is. made an appearance uh, last week, I think. It is all blurring together on uh, Rift Reaction. Yeah. I had you on my Spotify show with, with Emily. Uh, but first time on the show, and I'm really happy because we've been trying to get, uh, you know, especially around Worlds and any kind of international situation, we always try to get uh, folks on from other regions since this is no longer, since Mark and I can no longer just talk about North America stuff and we have to get exposed to the rest of the world. Um, so it's great to have you on. How's uh, your world stuff been? I mean, you've you've made several appearances on the desk. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't really. Um, like a year ago, I was hard stuck in the Benelux, which you know is like the ERL for Belgium, Netherlands, and and Luxembourg. Um, and then suddenly I did EU Masters, and then I went to LCK, and now I'm at Worlds. So that's still a little bit. I don't, I don't really know how to feel about that. I haven't really had the time to process that. But it's been incredible. Like, obviously, um, it's been uh, been a really cool experience. I think in terms of actual gameplay, Woods has been fairly positive as well. I think the meta has been cool. DFM making it was really, really hype. Um, and now we've actually gotten into groups. And, like, I've already enjoyed myself a lot. But groups is already, like, amped up to the max. So that's... has it. Has yeah. it been a challenge at all doing all the stuff remote? Because, uh, and I want to also, I mean, we're fo obviously focusing on our guests, but Mark has also been casting some play and stuff. So there's fun stuff to talk about there. But for both of you, I guess it's like, it's tough because almost everyone is in Berlin, but you guys have all been yeah. doing stuff remotely from your country. So uh, yeah. I guess Chron we'll start with you, Chronicler, but how's that been? 
Yeah, I, I don't love. I'm, I'm not a really. I'm, I'm not a real gamer, you know. I like my night, like what is it, like twelve to nine sleep schedule. Um, but Worlds ends at like four or five, uh, depending on the day. Which I, I don't know if it'll be better because I think for for you guys, Marks, it's like you have to like call time is like got like one thirty in the morning. It would have been, but I only ever casted the second set of oh, games, yeah, okay. so Smart. mine was usually like five yeah. or something. Yeah, you you didn't get get Wolf and Veldust. That's good. That's <laughs> yeah. that's what you want. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that that's been that's been a little bit rough. I, my walls are not particularly thick, so you can't see this in the world broadcast. But what's actually really cool is if you pan the camera over during worlds, I literally just drag my like two person mattress from my bedroom and like put it up to the wall so there's some form of sound isolation and I don't get my neighbors banging the walls at like three in the morning when I'm talking about teams. So that's like, at least I'm not casting, right? Are you, are you trying so, to lower you your voice at all? Because this makes, because uh, I do think you kind of have like a soft, like voice sometimes on the desk or whatever. Yeah, no, I do. I do. I like uh, subconsciously and also because like it's 3 a.m. So yeah. I just am slowly dying on the inside, yes. but it's mostly, um, mostly because of that. Yeah. Like my casting voice will be very different because I will be, in a studio and i can actually shout you yeah. should you should you should just go hard uh on the analyst asking if the police show up you can ask them to pop in and, and give their thoughts on whatever <laughs> matchups going on it's like hey faker just won this game how, how do you guys feel about that <laughs> yeah yeah they're like faker um yeah <laughs> i guess i guess it's true that's uh, an interesting situation okay this definitely explains the like late night radio broadcast voice that i i hear from you whatever the the games yeah. are going uh, oh, yeah, that's super cool. Okay, and and before I throw it over Mark to ask him a little bit about his casting experience for for worlds, I I do, I Mark asked you this question before the start, and I need I was planning on asking you this, Chronicler, a character, one of the the central characters even in some ways, uh, in Name of the Wind, which is a series that Mark and I both really like and kind of hate um, at the same time. Um, are, are any reference to that at all in your name? Yes, it is just the reference. One day Doors of Stone is coming out, boys. I don't know when, but it's coming. So eventually. it is. Okay, so it is. No, you, no, you are pulling it from no, I don't, no, I don't know if it is. Um, I, I've given up. Uh, I think in this scenario, it's best to just... No, no, but I'm say, not saying it is coming out. I mean, it is actually a reference. I didn't realize that it, it was. No, it That's is. Awesome. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. I just, I really liked it. Uh, I think my name before that used to be Phoenix from Phoenix, right? But that was very bland. I mean, and this was like when I was like 13, right? I think I switched to, uh, to Chronicler relatively early. Like we're talking when I was like 16, 17, I think. And then I just stuck with it ever since. Dude, I, I feel like love... it's, a, it's a good name for I... like what we do. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, love... It, it, it aged very well. I, I absolutely love that there's uh, so many fantasy book people in esports it's actually crazy to me like how how often like because i i would not have predicted if you'd said like is it a reference to name of the wind his name it's like well to mark's point it's a perfect day like if you were gonna become you were gonna choose a name for you know being a commentator or being a storyteller an analyst etc yeah. like you would choose chronicler it's, it's a, a perfect thing it's, it's so funny honestly like if i i don't think i would change but if i could change i'd probably change it to like something like attorney because like medic is really cool and you know he's a he's a he's a he's a med student and like that's that's really awesome but Did like i feel like that's school? also too long you know, it's, it doesn't ring as like it doesn't really work as well i just think the idea that slowly all the like casters in the world just put in what their previous profession was like yeah i'm programmer bringing you the cast with vet vet <laughs> Waiter, like, ba like Baker would be a great. Baker would be really good. Good. People name, just think you're meaning Faker, though. Wait. Yeah, I guess. Chronicler, yeah, were I didn't you? Even think about that. Did you? Do you, do you have a legal background? Do oh yeah, yeah. I, I finished. Uh, I finished. Uh, I have a bachelor's uh, in uh, international European law and a master's in law and technology. Whoa. Um, okay. Which I then promptly dumped to try and go freelance in esports. Nice. Well, not dumped. I mean. I'm not using it. So yeah. especially in the legal profession, like at this point, that degree doesn't really do anything. I don't think because you basically, I mean, yeah, you, you need to do like a legal internship for two years, right? Like I don't really know what the NA system is, but it's like the equivalent to you do that for two years at a firm and then you can like take the bar and then you're a lawyer. Gotcha. So I, I, I didn't do any of that. So yeah. I'm not very qualified. 
Wow, that's cool. I uh, Mark and I just did our undergrads, and then we showed up in esports and didn't do all nice. the extra credit work you guys were always doing. Uh, all right, Mark, really quickly, uh, what is it? What's what's been the casting experience like for you? You've been getting a lot of praise, I think. People excited to see you casting at Worlds. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, you had the best line of of Worlds twenty uh, twenty twenty one so far. Calling someone a little sussy baka, like <laughs> that, <laughs> that was my that was one of my highlights personally. Yeah, I uh, I was looking for a good opportunity to use it. Just looking for someone who's like building funny or like there's a weird pick or something. it's just yeah. I've been hearing it more and more on TikTok and shit, and I was like, I have to work this in somewhere. No, it was beautiful. I really appreciated that. I really appreciate that. In a lot of situations. So I mean, Mark, like Mark, who's like, okay, I'm casting worlds and, you know, I'm still getting into the, the casting side of this industry and all that stuff. They would, you know, be very, very serious. And Mark's just like, okay, I got to wait for my moment, my big moment. When can I drop the sussy baka? Well, I mean, the, the analysis and all the, the team prep, all that stuff is easy. The hard part is like being funny. So yeah. I have to like plan that more than I have to plan like, what does this team like to do? You know? So like I had that one in the can. I had the thing with high about like yeah. uh, if he was awake or not. I had the Genshin Impact joke about the anniversary being disappointing, ready to go. I just had a couple that was like, I'm going to find a place for these somewhere. This just reminds me of the, the meme with like the bird on stage who's got all like the note cards and trying to figure out the joke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, like, that's pretty just much, Mark, honestly. <laughs> that's Mark in the casting booth. He's just sitting there like, yeah, yeah, okay, Faker's doing this. Okay, great. Okay, but haha, TikTok reference. Um, <laughs> anyway. It, I, I, like, I, I had a my laptop next to me and like most people probably have like notes and like little analytics to look up builds and like, you know, what champions have been played by this player. It's just all jokes. Yeah. All the jokes I've thought of. Great. I'm glad. Well, uh, I guess, and you're, you're no more casting for you this event, right? No, I think I'm done. Okay. You think so? I mean, I hope so. Uh, I mean, someone, someone could uh, get really sick, and I sent ah. letters to people yes. in Berlin. So yes. we'll see if I can get in there. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Well... Uh, we, normally we ramble for the first, lately we've been rambling for the first 30 minutes of the show because we haven't had as much to talk about, but now there's a shit ton to talk about. So obviously the first day of groups, we can talk about how great North American LCK is because, you know, like, you know, we beat Mad Lions. That's a really a big deal. Uh, that uh, is, that is big. That's really That's cool. their only good team. Yes. Yes. Long exactly. Team region. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Alfari immediately saying, uh, by the way, in an interview with me, if you guys haven't haven't seen it yet, NA currently is at a similar level to Europe, if not better. Europe is not a particularly strong region at this event. I don't expect any of the European teams to make it out of groups. So we're we got to enjoy this moment of glory, everyone uh, in North America, because this it's going to go away soon. Um, all right. And then obviously a 4-0 day for LCK, which is, uh, I mean, it just worked out very well that we were able to have you on because uh, I think, you know, LCK gets to do their their victory lap right now. Uh, what else? Obviously, there's the fanatic drama. I, it's Mark, have you had any, do you have any thoughts on how we, we're going to approach that? I feel like the fanatic drama will largely gloss over because it's like the upset thing doesn't have any confirmation on what happened really to, for why he had to go home, just like family uh, emergency or something. Um, and then the the only thing is like the nemesis just said some really dumb well, shit. Well, the Bwipo tweet thing. What was the Bwipo tweet? Wait, I thought you, well, you oh, referenced this oh, in your Twitter chain. Yeah, 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 sorry. I thought you meant Bwipo tweeted about uh, Well, he upset. he tweeted after he unfollowed. Yeah, yeah, not the upset thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he, he just tweeted like, I, I just want a break from yes. social media. Yes. And I knew immediately, so I was streaming as he tweeted that, and I was like, guys, the conspiracy theorists are all going to come out of the woodwork now and explain how he's being forced to tweet it, or he doesn't actually mean that he's tweeting it, and like continue it on because they, they feed off the drama. And uh, sure enough, people were like, really? That's the way you're taking your break from social media? You could just uninstall it from your phone. You could have just muted those people. You could have just done all this stuff. And it's very goofy. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. It's like, just things like this always feel to me like unless you have any actual verifiable information, which generally people don't at all. Like it's it's fun to to to, to talk about, it, but people take it very seriously when 
I don't think they should. Yeah. I don't think there's a lot there that we know. Uh, well, uh, more LC or LEC drama. G2 releasing almost all of their roster. Uh, obviously, we tend to focus on things from a North American perspective, but I got to imagine we'll have at least one or two calls about that. Uh, and then I'm trying to think, is there is there any other major stuff besides the results from today and uh, and then the, the LEC drama? I guess you, uh, UOL released all their stuff. Oh, yeah. actually, I completely yeah. forgot about this. The Beyond Gaming uh, thing happened you oh know, it's, yeah, that... it's it all blur. There's so much happening right now that I'm like, I forgot that we haven't done an episode because that feels like you get done with play-ins and then you just move on. But that was actually yeah. just a couple days ago. I mean, yeah, yeah, even DFM making it first and upsetting C9 was something we didn't cover. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've already moved on to groups coverage, but we still need to reflect a little bit on plans on this show. So we'll have some co- uh, conversation as well uh, on all that. I'm looking and seeing if there's anything else we're forgetting in Twitch chat, but I think that. Uh, Things like that's probably most of it. Um, okay. Well, anyway, uh, Mark, do you want to start? Do you want to explain how the show works? Because we might have some people that don't normally tune in. Chronicler is here for the first time. Uh, he has no idea how it works. Uh, <laughs> do you know that you're going to be talking to randoms? That's always oh, yeah, the big surprise. Okay. That's fine. I, I used to be a random until very recently, so I'm very familiar These with These are the, your people. Uh, with the concept. Okay, good. So if you are watching and you don't know the concept, it is a live call-in show. So I just spam the Discord link in Twitch chat. Uh, go ahead and click that link and join up. Once you get here, go to the Pleb Calls or Pleb Calls 2 voice channels and mute your microphone if you get in there. No mouth breathers, please. And then in the Pleb Topics text channel up above that is where you'll go ahead and write in your take, whatever it is you want to talk about. Reacting to day one, reacting to the G2 stuff, predicting how the rest of the groups will go. Um, go ahead, put it in there. If we like your topic, we'll pull you from the Pleb Calls voice channel into the waiting room where you'll hang out until it's your turn to come on air. We'll do a quick mic check, make sure you're ready to go. And then you'll be here telling Chronicler about how the LCK just got lucky and they're all going to miss getting out of groups. Yes. So true. Uh, and he'll politely agree with you because he's too tired to uh, argue. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't even know what you're saying. <laughs> never, I'm never I'm never too tired to argue. Don't worry. <laughs> how how much sleep have you gotten? Because obviously we were talking about this a little bit before the show, but uh, even though it's 11 a.m. there, you. Oh you, yeah, no, I'm going back to sleep. sleep. Off. I'm, I'm getting I'm getting a nap in after this. Um, but that that's like kind of par for the course at the moment anyway. Like I said, like it's just it's world's sleep schedule is just going to be kind of wrecked for. I think it's like one and a half more weeks right yeah. because like we have we have groups and then after that we still have quarters semis and finals but that's like one group stay in terms of actual gameplay well, so that allows you to adjust a little bit and it's so crazy this year too because they slam normally it's four days and then a little break then four days they slam the first four days into three so no, it's, it's just insane very yeah, eight, crazy eight, 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 eight game days are no, like I, I got, I've done like this is my third desk day now, but I think Emily is doing like fifteen desk days and like the eight game days. A lot of them, yeah. Like eight games is just, it's kind of a slog. It's really good, but it's also exhausting. Yeah, I'm a little confused as to why they didn't just push out groups. Like, why didn't why didn't they have groups end on the nineteenth so that they, instead of the eighteenth, so that they could. I'm sure there's some sort of logistics reason, but uh, yeah. I'm, I'm I mean, think they could have preserved it. it. I know it's all minute, last right? minute for sure, but yeah. I just if because it's not moving and it's all in the same place, you would kind of think that you could just move stuff around. But I'm sure I'm sure there's some sort of reason. Uh, by the way, I know Mark gave the spiel, but just for those that are subs, be sure that you uh, when you sub, which you know would be great if all of you sub. My God, the amount of subscribers I'd have right now if you all did. But uh, if when you do sub, make sure you link your uh, Discord and Twitch so that you can get access to the subtopics chat in Discord. It moves a little slower there. Uh, and so there's, I mean, it's not, you're not guaranteed to get on by any means if you have a bad take, but it, it's a bit of a better chance. Um, so uh, thank you to everybody who does so. We really appreciate it. Mark is already pulling some callers. So it looks like uh, we've got some good takes, probably a lot to talk about tonight. But uh, while he's doing that, thank you to Ventus. 43 months, Blue Jay for 30, 1997 for 19, Honey Badger, D Fitch with the tier two, DJ Morali. Um, let's see, where are we? Uh, B- Beer Man? Bear Man. Bear Man, Dar Zombie, uh, B Allen, Z Warden, 
Purple Ray Q for 36 months. Three years. Thank you. Uh, little Alfie Iron Jack 9899. Thanks so much, everybody. Our first call, caller is here. Mogul. Mogul, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Dallas, Texas. And you've called into the show before, right? Yes, I have. I oh. believe I've called in twice. Nice. Well, welcome back. Uh, what do you want to talk about on the show tonight? Uh, I believe Mark took me because I have the NA Hopium call. Okay. And I've essentially said that, um, let me read it out exactly, TL is going to be the only Western team to make it out of the group stage, and this is going to be the worst outing EU has in a world so far in the recent years. And Mad Lions looks like a dog shit version of previous EU sh saviors. Just going to be honest. So... One thing I like about this is that our NA Hopium call, the major NA Hopium call is just like, one of our teams is going to get out of groups. Uh, <laughs> it's better than we've had in the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and well I think... I feel like there's a very important component to it, which yes. is that EU is dog shit. EU, if uh, EU doesn't make it out... Because I, I do think like... Uh, Okay, I have to be very careful. These are always the episodes that I end up getting ratioed on the YouTube thing uh, from not all EU fans, but some of the EU fans. But uh, yes, I think it it is a, it would be very fascinating if after a couple years of EU people shitting on us in Twitch chat all day and every day, uh, we somehow have the only team that gets out. Okay, so Mogul, why why are you so confident in this take? Um, so at least from what I've uh, read online and all the analysts, what they're talking about, everybody was saying how Mad Lions specifically is going to be better than the rest of the groups in their team because their macro is so good, they play so well on the team, and they look completely disjointed uh, in their game today. And don't get me wrong, that could just be jitters, and they could bounce back com uh, completely yesterday um, from yesterday and stomp today, but, you know, you never know what would happen. And... Considering how TL played and how they essentially bent Mad to play the way they wanted to play, that gives me a lot more confidence because they were controlling that game. They were dictating a lot of the pace, and that's better than any any team I've seen in the past worlds. Period. So, gives me I, hope. I assume just to fast forward through this part that you are like, well, Rogue is in an insane group, and uh, also uh, Fnatic has got a sub, so they're. And free fall. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. So EU teams, don't get me wrong, I feel like EU teams have, have had open the past, but this year it's looking rough for them. Yeah. All well, right. And, I mean, it sounds like Rogue will probably, based off what we saw today, finish over Cloud9, right? Or do you think that that was a, a fluke? And so even though you're saying, you know, Rogue's doomed not to get out. Well, you know? I, don't get me wrong, I think Rogue is actually a little underrated. I think they actually have very good players in each of their roles. So they are a good team. It's not like they're not a good team. I just think it's they have the ability to lose the game just off a of coin flip. So anything could happen. I mean, so Freak, I'm not going to discount Cloud9 anymore. Freak tweeted that uh, Rogue is the best team that EU sent. So um, clearly they're they're decent. Uh, all right, Mark. Before we throw it to Chronicler, as I, he might be still waking up, what do you think of this? Uh, sorry, my cat's rubbing his face on the mic of my the arm of my mic, and it's very cute. Lovely. Can I? Can, should I throw to Chronicler instead? Are you Probably. able to answer this? Uh, uh, <laughs> Chron Chronicler, is okay. North America the only Western team getting out this year? I guess a, a good question is like, how many Western teams could even get out? And and if oh, that's you know, there's horrible. only no, it's it's not. It's fine. Um. I need you to pee here because Mark isn't. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine. Yes. I, I will be present. I will Thank try you. my best. So uh, I I think that just by the nature of groups, um, TL making it out is the only reasonable take. I don't, unlike, unlike FBX, like collapse immensely, which I don't expect. I think they just had like one subpar game against Dumbon. Dumbon had a good meta read that they weren't really finding. But then, so C9's not making it out. Like that... That I just don't see that happening, regardless of like how good the team would be relatively for NA. And then uh, I think Hundred Thieves actually might grow decently well in the tournament. I think they did actually have have a set of like openings yesterday. They didn't really utilize, which I think domestically they would have. 
Uh, but I still don't see them making it out again. Like EDG and T1 both should just be too good. But Group D is, is wide open. Like no clue what's going to happen there. So I, I can see them make it out. Yeah. If well, they sounds- start to win against LNG. It sounded like you said TL's TL getting out as the Western team. Were you saying that was the only decent take? Like, do you think that it's? Are you are you officially picking them over Mad to make it out of the group? Oh no, uh, no, I'm, I I don't know. Uh, I think it depends on who does well against LNG, and I have no clue what's going to happen there. But I also think that we should not overreact, and that Mad is definitely going to be way better than they were yesterday. Um, but. I, I I can see TL make it up, yeah. Like I don't think it's likely. I think what more is more likely is they have like one or two more good games, and then they kind of get caught up with, and then Mad Lions grows over the course of like groups, and then still makes it out as first or second, depending on how my boys uh, BDD and and Ruler are feeling. It's that week. Um, the week two thing happens. North America sucks and. Europe, I, mean, I don't know. know it depends. Here? I, I, I think, I think TL is a good team, right? Like, I think individually they have really good players. It's just about do they play with the same confidence? I think one thing that always has upset at me because because I have have stand an, an A team every now and then over the last couple of years is that even if they're like aggressive domestically, they can go to a to 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 a, like worlds and then just do nothing. So as long as they don't do that, I think they should be all right. And LNG didn't really look very threatening. And I think LNG hasn't really been tested yet. So if they're winning against LNG, I think TL are looking pretty good. I don't see them beating Gen G though. I don't think that's gonna happen. Gen G's gonna be Gen G is definitely But this is at least in my opinion, I think this is the best NA has looked in terms of being able to actually control the pace of the game. And that's very important in my opinion. So that's what's giving me the most hope currently. Honestly. I feel like uh, I kind of agree with Chronicler. It looks like Gen G is the strongest team in the group right now. LNG looked pretty bad against them, but I also feel like when I was doing my prep for them, Icon was actually pretty important to them unlocking Ale, who like is really good, but didn't get a ton of 1v1 advantages himself. And he, he stomped play-ins, don't get me wrong, but play-ins is obviously a lower level of, of competition than, than was waiting for him in the main stage. So like when he goes up against Alfari, you know, I think Ale could have a better game than Alfari, but he's not going to like dumpster Alfari in the 1v1. So it felt like BDD absolutely shit on that game. Like just took a huge shit yeah. on Icon. And yeah. then Icon couldn't do anything. And that's like one of the two important people for snowballing their top side, like him and Tarzan working together. And then like Tarzan didn't really have anywhere to go. And it just like, it felt like it all came apart just because BDD like 1v9 that game. So. I'm a little hesitant to say like, oh, well, this is how this is LNG's level because I'm like, well, how, I don't. I mean, Jensen's nah. good, but nah. you know, is so he going to do what what BDD just did? Mark, do you agree with to back to the callers point though? Do you agree that TL was like controlling that game and making Mad play the way they wanted to play? Um, mostly, yeah. I mean, I, I felt like they they had a pretty good handle on it. You and I were ta- like watching the game together, and like there was a little bit of a moment where you know the goldie went back in mad's favor and i was saying like well it's not like they, they probably outscale us a little bit and so it was a little scary but it, mad didn't really make a play if i remember correctly to like get them that advantage back they they looked on the back foot so in that sense i think tl did control most of the game yeah i think tl yeah, just started the... to like slowly lose these team fights where they or trades it'd be like you know one they'd get one kill and mad would get two or something like that. And so then the gold started to, to get, and then there was just that fight, uh, next to Baron, uh, that went really well for them. Chronically, are you going to say something? Yeah, I think that outside of the, um, uh, the one, like the top side dive where they got like chased down and that, that was, I think the game, but no, when normally the game would have been thrown Well, like they would have gotten, that was like the break point for me after that, I was pretty confident. If you look at the compositions as well, and obviously this is me speaking from an LCK perspective, but the position that TL was in, like post early game, where you have an Azrael that's on two free items and is not going to get contested by anything that Mad have, like you should just not lose those games. You can lose those games, but you shouldn't. So I was happy to see that they actually played well around tactical post that. As long as he goes untouched, he can 1v9 team fights um, if he just channels his inner Teddy. And he did well. Uh, well, Mogul, 
It sounds like Mark and Chronicler are a little more skeptical on your take, but I do appreciate you coming in with the the hopium. Uh, is there anything you want to say before we move on to our next caller? Um, shout out to Mark for doing this really wonderful cast on play and stage. I enjoyed it. And Chronicler has been a great addition to the world's um, broadcast team. So I've been enjoying all the content that y'all have been making so far. Let's see. Appreciate it all. Yeah. Thanks so much for calling in. All right. Uh, Mark, you want to go? Oh, off he goes. Uh, Donna, thank you for the five months. Sneebin for the prime. The high ground with a tier two. We love to see it. Uh, and time. Thank you for the prime. Thanks, everyone, for subbing. Trying to, to pump the sub numbers during World's Month. It always is uh, the best time to, to chase that. Community is here. Community, where are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling from Sacramento, California. And you've called in before, too, right? Uh, yeah, uh, two or three times before. Well, welcome back. What do you want to talk about on the show? Um, my topic today is regarding the recent G2 news and how I don't want any of them as an NA fan to come to NA because importing superstars in the past hasn't really done much for a region in terms of, in terms of development aside from Core JJ is really the only big name that comes to mind. And I'd r much rather see those slots go to promising rookies that have been developed through our new academy system and proven ground system than recycle old EU superstars over and over again and just further stagnate our region's development. When you say recently, or sorry, when you say like Core is one of the only people that come to mind, do you mean recently? Because obviously we've had uh players that i think have have done very well over here like bjergsen and jensen and and those folks i mean when i say superstars i mean players that have already done so much in other regions like gotcha. a reckless a wonder literal world finalists for other regions recently and then came over and haven't done much because like bjergsen jensen santorin their pretty much entire careers were in NA. Like they've developed into NA players. Like they've development has been in our solo queue, our scrims, not in EU scrims, EU solo queue for the most part. Yeah. That's what I mean when I'm saying recycled superstars. If if TL makes it out, well one, would you say Alfari's a superstar? I would definitely say Alfari in recently has been a very exciting exception to this. Because he came over, and I was worried when I saw him came over that he would just be in another one of the players that was really good in EU and then came over and was just decent. But by far, he's been probably the best import since Core, I, I'd say. Gotcha. All right. So, uh, what are what are our options to pull from again? Oh, let me pull, let me let me make sure I get all of them right because I know there's everybody. the entire it's basically staff. everybody except for Yankos and Caps, right? Uh, and yeah. the entire staff. So you know, Grabs could come over and Nelson, Wonder, Nelson. Mickey X. Although yeah. Nelson's only been over there for a very short time, and Reckless. And a lot of people are spamming TSM Reckless. TSM fans, I think, really want that, and I I am skeptical. Um, okay. Mark, do you want any of those players? Um, at the G two garage sale, Carlos's import <laughs> import can emporium. I get a two for one. You think I can get a? <laughs> I don't. Based off of how well I don't know. He needs. To, he's everything must go. Is what it sounds like for G two right now. So, the G two uh, garage sale. Well, all I'll say, um, I don't dislike any of those players necessarily and i think one of the things that often happens when you bring over these superstars like the caller's talking about is that there's usually a huge price tag put on them and like a ton of hype and they're seen as like saviors of that team or that league and then they don't live up to that level and again like the caller said notable exception exception to court jj <laughs> but um you know like reckless on a skill level and mickey on like a playmaking skill level i'm like yeah that sounds good like i'd bring them over why not um i think the teams that they would go to probably have the budget to make it work. And then, you know, there's kind of the lower class teams that don't have the insane budget to drop, you know, half a mil, a mil on these players to, to get them over here. I don't know what their going rates are now. Um, but realistically, you're looking at the top five teams spending on them and maybe one other team that's going to splash the pot this, this year. I don't know. I think, um, 
I don't have a huge problem with them coming over. I just wouldn't like it if they just randomly showed up on like some seventh or eighth place team. I think that's what would bug me more than like a team really trying to to say like, hey, we think like Reckless is a legit superstar and we're going to try and build a great team around him. If it's like, and again, I don't think Reckless would go to a team, but like if CLG picked him up and then they just had like a couple other like randomish veteran players and it was just like no realm of possibility where Reckless wins, I would be like, why are you, are you here? Do you, I'm curious, Mark, do you care? Like, let's say, uh, Wonder, Wonder is one I'm more hesitant about, um, just because with the, are you buying about into his, the, you're about buying into the wow stuff? Well, it's not just the wow stuff. Like, I don't really care what someone does in their off time. I just mean like straight number of solo queue games played. I've always been pretty adamant about the grinder mindset and, and being on in favor of it. And so, you know, I don't care if, if he's the greatest wow player in the world, but if he only plays 10 solo queue games, then I have a bit of an issue. Um, and people supplement it with one V ones and watching VODs and all this stuff, but no, thank you. Let, let me ask you this. Let's say uh, TSM, I don't think this is going to happen. TSM announces, or it comes out that TSM is spending 3 million on Reckless. Do you care uh, if like about the price tag at all? Obviously I do. I just, I honestly don't know if you do, if it would annoy you. I mean, FTX money, baby. So you don't care. What, e, what, EG then, you know, any of these guys, like, do you care as much? <laughs> what if it's 3.5 million? The most anyone's ever spent on a, on a player, they're paying, they're paying Carlos 2 million and then it's three and a half for the salary. Like, okay, I just, listen, I'm curious if you'd care at all about the salary. It's, it's hard for me to divorce, like what the team has currently, like TSM trying to make an upgrade. They bring Bjergsen back. They get reckless. This frees up an import in the top lane. They get, I don't know. Nuggery. Wow. Oh my God. This is nuts. I don't know if that actually works out in terms of import slots. I don't think it does actually. Whatever. My point is. That's the team that's swinging for the fences, and I'm cool if Reckless joins. And the salary is on them to figure out with whatever deals they have. Gotcha. So you're you're down with these guys to come over. What, just and just to be clear on that last or on the the one other little part that you mentioned, do you think that there shouldn't be hype around them if they do? Because you said you're you kind of get frustrated whenever the superstars come over here and it's a bunch of hype and it's like they're going to save the league. Are you are you worried about like overhyping some of these guys if they do come over? Yeah, I mean, the perks perks effect, basically. I mean, perks has been good largely for the year. People pretend like he's shit. I don't think he's shit. It's just, you know, we, we were like, this is the greatest Western player of all time. He was, he was good. I mean, he was really good. I don't think he's as good. Um, all right, Chronicler, you're the outside perspective on this stuff. Do does Should North America not take the bait on this? Uh Spoiler, no. I feel like they probably will try to, but... I mean, uh, they they might, yeah. That that seems inevitable. But no, I think the, the take's pretty based, not because of the G2 thing specifically, but because it mentioned uh, investing more heavily in NA Academy. And I do actually think that that is the way out of the hole that has kind of been dug for NA over the last couple of years, where you're always going to be, like, behind the curve, right? If you don't have, like a sustainable form of talent development for yourself because um no matter how many players you import like you need to actually generate more good players yourself because it raises the average level of your your so of like everything right of your solo queue practice of your scrims of whatnot i think one of the main reasons why lec and i don't know if they'll be successful this year at worlds uh, I, I think they'll do okay i don't think this year's lec is going to be as good as it's been in recent years I think it's going to be an LPL LCK party. But one of the things that I, uh, also as someone who came up through that, deeply appreciates about Europe is the EUM system, right? Like you have, like, you have the LFL, like second division, and then the first division, and then the LFL main division. And like LFL is bigger than most leagues that go to Worlds, right? Like they got fucking, what was it, Vin Diesel won the rock to like do a promo for them. They got like 250, 30k viewers on their um, the on, one, on, on their finals, and yeah. the main thing about that is that like the amount of talent that the LFL generates. If you look at Law Esports did a post as well, I think it was the LEC Twitter about the like amount of EU Masters players, right? Like how many NA Academy players have made? I guess 
Bob Ip and, and Tally with that. So that in play, and so that's something. But I think that obviously this is a long term thing, like long term investment. I don't think this is going to help you over the short term. But for NA to as a whole stop relying on buying players from other teams that have been successful in the past, like really go all in on making sure that your own scene is in better health. Yeah. I mean, I've been saying that forever, but um, you get called xenophobic, I think, sometimes. I mean, that's what happened in Twitch chat earlier. So that's just, oh, well, it's, it's tough. I know about that. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I'm down to go with the caller. Like, I, okay, I'm going to combine both Mark and, and Chronicler here. I am okay with the idea of picking up some of these players if there is the acknowledgement that it is not going to be what everybody thought it was like picking up perks where you're getting a player who is necessarily in their prime. I'm not even saying these players aren't in their prime anymore. I'm just saying when they come to North America, I don't think they will look like they did in the LEC. And yet we pay for them, uh, you know, these contracts and stuff and the buyouts as if they are going to show up the way they do in the LEC. And it's I, very rare that they ever do. And so, and I, I think it, it ends up becoming a, a huge issue um, and it's not good. And then you aren't building correctly because you're like, well, this is our star player. And like, they don't always, I don't even know if Perks has been the best player on Cloud9 this year. Uh, Mark could answer that question, but um, actually Mark, do you think Perks has been the best player on Cloud9 this year? Mm. No, think, but it's come and gone for the. I don't feel like one player has been yeah, like yeah. hands down the best. I would say Fudge is probably. Yeah, I was gonna go with the Fudge. I feel like sure. he's been. He was been. If you don't count Lock In, maybe he was a dumpster well, yeah. in Lock In. Well, yeah, but that's like how, <laughs> yeah, how long yeah. is that ago at this point? Yeah, yeah, that was but two weeks in January. Yeah, yeah, no, no, good point, good point, good point. Two weeks in January. Uh, I think it's enough <laughs> that it's not as if. <laughs> Berg's has definitely had more than two two bad weeks. I don't think the average would pull a fudge down that bad. Um, but I think that's a very important lesson for people where it's like, who's going to be better? The best Western player in the world who's coming over to North America or one guy that makes Laura look like she's tiny um, from <laughs> Australia. You know what I mean? And so uh, I, I think it's... Uh, it's it's just like there, there's a lesson there and and by the way the development doesn't always have to be some dude in texas but like with with the o stuff it's like maybe there's a player who's looking good at worlds this year and is a similar situation to where fudge was before i don't know i just i i'd rather give uh spend you know a million on four or five players from one of these regions and have two of them in the main team and three of them in Academy then spend three million on a G two player is the way I think I would put it. Um, all right, well, caller, thank you uh, for giving us the conversation. I think it's always good to to have these things, and I know we always talk about stuff like this. But uh, community, is there anything you want to add to any of this stuff? I'll give you the shout out afterwards, but I know you didn't you didn't follow up too much on any of what we were saying. Um. Yeah. So yeah, like the one thing is that sure some of these gd it's also the price tag of them i should say too it's also what concerns me they're not cheap and i really like what you said that money could be spent on developing the players for the future because it's such big these price tags and so that was i think a lot of my main points too was it's the develop or the investment of resources it's not great the way it's going i think yeah Hey, thanks so much, community, for the call. Uh, anything you want to shout out? Uh, yeah, just shout out to everybody around the world right now who's just ruining their sleep schedule and over the next week or couple weeks for this. Uh, it's always worth it, but it's always a struggle when that alarm goes off at 4 in the morning. Very true. Hey, thank you so much for the call, and uh, we'll catch you next time. All right. Uh, let's take a quick break, actually, to talk about... Alienware. It's actually kind of a bit of a quiet week for Alienware. That I don't have the the normal stuff to promote. I I hopeful I'm hopeful that something will pop up very big 
soon. I know that you know the end of the year. It's already some some cool surprises. Uh, but in the meantime, I just want actually a great time for me to mention that all my world's coverage is sponsored by Alienware. I I I don't I, I hope I never take it for granted, but I know that some of you I was I went back and watched the uh the video from twenty eighteen where Mark spits in my coffee when we announced that uh Alienware is coming in to sponsor the whole thing. And they've they've now uh, renewed so many times, you know, they were in uh, in 2021 now, and we announced at the end of 2018. So it's just been cool to have them alongside. And I know that some of you guys might have heard me talk about them so many times throughout the years, and it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I just want to continue to really appreciate, and I hope you do too, all of you, that having Alienware on board has allowed me to continue to do this career. I don't have to worry about going to a media company that's going to go under in 18 months because they realize that esports is not the thing that they thought, or like people are running ad blocker or whatever, any of this stuff, having Alienware around allows me to continue to cover worlds, allows me to continue to do shows like Hotline League and uh, run it and so many so many awesome things. So uh, from the bottom of my heart, I just really uh, appreciate them coming on as a sponsor. I always appreciate all the support that you guys have shown them throughout the years. And I know you, some of you guys have been around for a very long time. You've probably done the shout outs to them previously. You've You've thanked them on Twitter or whatever. You've bought like an Alienware computer in the past. And uh, I just, I hope that all of you can continue just like myself to appreciate how much support they've been able to give uh, all my content because I definitely would not be able to do this without them. So uh, if you if you want to check out an Alienware uh, setup, please go to alienware.com slash Travis. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link in the description uh, below and you can listen or you can go if you're listening to this show as a podcast, you can go over and take a look at that uh, that code as well. But Alienware.com says Travis, uh, really appreciate it. Trevor Monreal in the chat says, I'm loving my Alienware or it's so nice. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. All right. Uh, we can go on to our next caller. Mark, what are you laughing at? <laughs> it's too it's too far down the rabbit hole to explain. <laughs> Unless you want me to try. <laughs> what is it? Can I'm, you give I'm me like a, pre, a, a primer? No. Okay. So... All right, only because Chronicler asked. I'm on a fan like during your 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 ad breaks. I must admit, sometimes I space out and go on Reddit. So I was on the yeah. fantasy subreddit, and they often have like best opening lines in fantasy, and it's it's usually the same shit over and over again. But someone did what's the worst opening lines in fantasy, <laughs> and this is like the, the most upvoted comment, and it's I think it's from a Harry Potter fan. So like I'm digging into like what it's actually from, but what, what made me laugh was. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ebony Dark with a apostrophe Ness Dementia Ravenway, and I have long ebony black hair. That's how I got my name in parentheses. With purple streaks and red tips that reaches my mid back, and icy blue eyes like limpid tears. And a lot of people tell me I look like Amy Lee. Author's note if you don't know who she is, get the hell out of here. <laughs> So, I wish says actually, this is from a, a Harry Potter fan fiction <laughs> called My Immortal. Yeah, I know. I haven't seen it. this before. So I was on <laughs> some My Immortal has a wiki. <laughs> so I was on the so this is what actually made me laugh the hardest. I was on the wiki for My Immortal. And it's the main character in Mary Sue of My Immortal. Arguably the worst female character in fan fiction history or literature in general. Oh fuck, it's too funny. I, I'm very happy I asked you to explain that. That's a win. It's a good start of the day. <laughs> the stuff that happens on Hotline League, you don't get this on any other League of Legends esports show, okay? I just want to put that Ugh. out there. Everybody talks about, oh, these guys are real, like, they understand the thing or that, whatever. You're never going to get Mark rambling about a Harry Potter fan fiction. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Mark, I'll get would you like call. to go? <laughs> Have you recovered? Would you like to go get another caller? Okay, off he goes. Thank you to Time for the 11 months and Badger uh, for the 7 months. Badger says Alienware. Thank you, Badger, for the sub. I see uh, Brian Kibler in the chat. How's it going, Brian? Good to see you. Um, what else are you guys talking about in the Twitch chat? Thanks, everyone, for the subs. No, I'm I'm not dying on the inset. I'm just tired. I'm loving this. This is what I live. Why do you think I want to cost LCK? It's because this is just how our costs go as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Chronicler replying to Twitch chat, by the way, for the people who aren't watching live. Thank you, Killslayer, for showing up on the show. What do you want to, or where are you calling from? Uh, Chicago-ish. Chicago-ish. Okay, how's your ping lately? 
Uh, worse in my current place. At my old apartment, it was like seven. Oh, my God. Okay, well, what do you want to talk about on the show? All right, so I want to talk about this really cool Harry Potter fanfic I wrote. Okay. Um, <laughs> there we go. I'm ready. <laughs> so, uh, I was... 100 Thieves are much better than they look today and will make it out of their group. And the reason that they looked bad today is just that EDG is that much better than all the rest of the teams at the tournament. Ah, okay. Okay, so it's all just a ruse. Uh, 100 Thieves is actually uh, good. You, you said they'll make it out of the group, so it's them and EDG you're saying? Yes, yes. Okay, well, I'm glad we got Chronicler here. Um, okay, so what, what, gives you the, what gives you this confidence? So the biggest thing for me is that following 100 Thieves, especially this current iteration, like this year, is that they're super adaptable. They've been really good at if they fall into a, a rut or a slump of some sort, they bounce back really well with either some sort of new look or new energy or whatever it is. Like um, when people started writing them off towards the end of the season, uh, end of summer specifically, even though they were so dominant for a lot of summer, everyone was kind of like, ah, oh, whatever, 100 Thieves, not as much anymore. We're, we don't care about them anymore. We care about EG or whoever was surging at the time. Um, and then they bounce back great in playoffs until TL knocks them down to loser's bracket. And everyone's like, oh, okay, yeah, 100 Thieves wasn't the real deal. TL's the real deal. And then they come back and they trounce TL in the finals. And it still felt like even going into Worlds, people were kind of underrating them, even though they beat both Cloud9 and TL. You would get, you know, people saying that, uh, making tier lists, you know, with Cloud9 TL higher than them. And I think they, these players specifically seem to do better when people aren't believing them, which I know is like a dumb, intangible thing. This is all speculation anyway, but... Um, like watching like the heist finale and like their interviews and stuff they they're always talking about like oh yeah and the media wasn't respecting us and like we took that personally and that it's literally like the michael jordan now i took that personally um and they they seem to just bounce back from stuff like that really well and play their best when people are kind of disrespecting them well before i throw it to mark or chronicler uh i'm gonna throw it to brian kibler in the chat who wanted to know did EDG mind control FBI to whiff every ult? That's his his question for you, caller. Uh, was is EDG so good that they were able to mind control FBI into whiffing all his ults? So okay, I'm not gonna go as far as mind control, but I do think that EDG's playstyle, especially kind of what they were doing in this game, like the slow choke you out sort of playstyle, makes opposing teams look worse than they are. It's like the same thing that happened in LPL finals with FPX. Like people can agree FPX is a really good team. And watching that finals, everyone's like, FPX didn't really show up today. Like, what were they thinking? Um, and I, I think a lot of it is just when a team is that strategically sound and like good across the board, like EDG is. EDG doesn't have like a, a weakness to poke at, as far as I can tell. I think it makes opposing teams look worse than they are to the eye test because they're choking you out. Yeah. So, I mean, Kibler took the words out of my mouth a little bit there. Um, I feel like that was a not great game and not just because like, wow, they're choking them out and, and 100 Thieves don't have any plays to make. They actually had a couple plays to make and they tried to make some. And I actually thought that there were times where I was like, ooh, but they just never came together because... Wait, what were the times like, Mark? Where, where you were like, what? Uh... <laughs> okay, just, just thank you for I, clarifying. Those times too. I was at work too, so it was bad. No, yeah. I, I, I remember some plays. There were some openings. I agree with Mark. Yeah, I, I thought that they, if they played well, they could have punished EDG like at Mid River that one time, where like, you know, uh, who he was flying in trying to land this Yumi alt, and FBI just shoots the two most mobile carries who the Yumi's not going on, and like, there was some weird stuff like that um, that just didn't look that great, and they obviously had issues uh, early in the game. Uh, FBI got fucked up in laning phase and then they kind of did a good job still funneling gold into him and like abandoning topside which was losing anyways to get the turret plates on him but they didn't do anything with that gold and it just didn't look great and not all of it was like god EDG just had no openings in their gameplay Chronicler sounds like you mostly agree I uh, I mean like I, I what 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 happened to T1 in this in this hypothetical yeah, scenario? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not yeah, talking yeah. to you, Marx. I'm, I'm wondering, like, because because for 100 thieves to make it out, um, you need to want to not only uh, lose to EDG, which I think can happen. I think EDG is a really good team. I definitely agree with that part of the take, 
but criticize them as they may. T1 is some of the individually best players in Korea. Um, and just be Kirk Kronika, what you're saying is only two teams can make it out of this group. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and there's and one I, of them. I, I do think that. Is SKT. You know, oh, that... T1, sorry. <laughs> and one of them is EDG. So yes. I see. I see. <laughs> sorry, I, know, I know. I know. No, no, no. I, I, I'm glad that you, you're clarifying. Um, and, and, and I'm being a little bit facetious about it, right? But I think it's important that when, as an LCK uh, analyst, I criticize teams like Gen.G or T1, it's really easy to forget that still in the context of the LCK. The LCK has the most talented players in the world, right? Like, I think it's fine to argue that the LPL is a stronger region, but even the best LPL teams, some of the best players are Korean imports, right? Like, the fact of the matter is just that I think individually, the LCK is just absolutely cracked. It's completely fine to criticize T1 for things like their mid-game, sometimes they're overforced, their drafts can be questionable, but that's, again, within the context of playing against, like, Dom on Kia, which, well, we saw how they did in their first game. Um, so I don't, I just don't see a scenario in which T1 lose to 100 Thieves twice. Like, maybe they'll drop, like, one game at any point, but, like, I don't, I don't, I don't ever see 100, uh, 100 Thieves making it out over T1. Like, that will be shocking to me. Yeah, I think, um, for, for 100 Thieves, like if you're trying to bright side it, it's like that draft wasn't really great for 100 Thieves with Closer as an enabler. Um, if you look at playoffs, he on a carry roll was the biggest reason that they popped off in playoffs. And there are carry junglers right now. Like the Talon went through unbanned. Like I hope he has a Talon in his pocket. I hope he has some of that stuff. Um, will that be enough to beat T1? I don't know, but I... I I can buy a world where like FBI had jitters for his first like world's game with with 100 thieves and um yeah the the draft wasn't great and they looked better through the rest of the tournament. I I can buy that, but I still don't know how they they beat uh T1 exactly. Yeah. Yeah, uh, if I go ahead kill Slayer. So, I think for me the thing is just like I was kind of talking about at the beginning the one of 100 thieves this iteration's biggest strength is that they don't seem to tilt really they seem to just take it like all right we lost that one we know why let's let's go at it the next day and i don't know as much about t1 i'm not following like their you know their equivalent of uh you know whatever youtube show if they do one um but i know they're really young and that can definitely be a factor with longer tournaments like this with you know nerves and inconsistency and not being able to bounce back from losses. So like if, for instance, um, EDG T1 is tomorrow, uh, if EDG smacks them, then, you know, maybe that affects them going forward. And I'm to be clear, I'm not saying 100% chance 100 Thieves makes it out no matter what. I think it's I think it's really tight. I just think it's tighter than maybe people are giving 100 Thieves credit for. All right. I guess we'll have to see. I don't have I, I'm definitely all in on the on the TL hype train after today, but I'm not willing to hop on the 100T hype train, especially because, like, LCK just, like, I don't know. Mark, do we have an LCK take, or should I? can I go into this with Chronicler? Right we now? got a negative LCK take on the way. Oh, Hit wow. Me. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, then we'll, I, I'm i excited to hear about this uh, because I'm definitely on the, more any, more than anything, I'm on the LCK hype train right now. Uh, Kill Slayer, I guess we'll see how things go with 100T. If so, you'll look like a genius. It's always fun to do the show whenever we're one out of six games because <laughs> uh, who knows what will play out over the next five. Uh, so thank you so much, Killslayer. Anything you want to shout out here at the end? Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, shout out to the sponsors. I actually bought one of the uh, Aurora R12s, I think it was, a month or two ago. Gave it to my sister for her birthday. She's been playing a lot of Minecraft, so she seems nice. to be digging it. Nice. A, a perfect game to play on a, on a high-end gaming machine. That's right. You need a 3060 to play Minecraft. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. hey, there's RTX now in there, so uh, those That's video right, cards yeah. are pretty good. Uh, and thank you for saying that as we have an Alienware person in the chat to see that uh, this is a thing that people shout out during the show. Uh, thank you so much, Killslayer, for the call, and we'll catch you next time. Have a good night. Yeah, have a good one. Uh, okay, off we go. I'm excited. I'm hoping this is the he's grabbing the LCK take um, because I'm I'm curious about this because I, I was gonna I figured we'd talk a lot about how good they were. Kenny San, thank you for the six months. Uh, Daddy, please spank me. Thank you for the eleven months. The real the real back. divert. 
Crash Cat, and Benjamin. <laughs> Benjamin for 33 months. All right. Flair is here. Flair, where are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling from Pensacola, Florida. Pensacola, Florida. Okay. What do you are you are you the faded uh, LCK negative LCK take? Uh, I am, but I will preface I am a big LCK fan, and I watch the I stay up during the summertime all the time to watch the uh, LCK broadcast. It's one of my favorite broadcasts. So okay, here we. Uh, I see you're already trying LCK to get it good but... with Chronicler. I see. I see. Okay. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um. So uh, my take is that the LCK won't make it past the quarterfinals. Um, I think that the LCK has a little bit of a group buff. Um, and that, um, yes, it may be an overreaction. I think that LCK will do good in groups, but in BO5s, they're going to be challenged by Western teams and LPL teams. Um, and the most notable two teams, I think, that are going to come out uh, and really put it into the LCK is Liquid and... Um, Mad Lions. Uh, I think that with their play style of being a little bit more aggressive, um, especially Mad Lions and Liquid in their playoffs looking a lot more aggressive, um, I think uh, if any either of those teams match into any of the LCK teams, they'll be able to take them down. Okay, so you already have um, Genji out of groups. Versus anybody. You, Say, already, you already have Genji out of groups. Like, they're not, they're not going forward out of groups, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, my sort of backup point to this is that I feel like the LCK um, doesn't ha doesn't adapt in best of five series. Um, we saw in that their playoffs, um, all of their playoffs were either a 3-1 or a 3-0. And um, even in the regional gauntlet, the only 3-2 match was the T1 Honda Life game. Um, and I don't think that was even a the best quality LCK game. Um, but yeah, either way, that's my whole sort of spiel and take. All right. I, 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 this is the first time I think anyone's ever said that they're a huge LCK fan. They watch LCK. <laughs> Normally, these folks come in with like massive airs of superiority. So I'm just shocked that you're, you're well, like coming the, with the most humility. fun thing with calls like this is you should be like, Did you watch LCK? And yeah, like yeah. some of the callers are like, No, it's just a gut feeling that, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you just see like they're just not that good, you know. Um, Okay, well, if you watch all the time, I'm excited for Chronicler to to duel you here. But, but I oh, yeah. I guess uh, okay. So do you think just out of curiosity, you think three of them are going to make it out, not Gen G? Do so you think all three will make it out? Um, I think it sort of depends on the LPL's performance, but yeah, um, I think they'll do pretty good in groups. Um, I would say Damon will make it out. Um, let me see if I can pull up the full list of everything. Yeah, I mean, I guess oh, you wow. you would say. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, going to be definitely, yeah, I'll say Hamble, three, three LPL, power. three LCK, and then, uh, oh, actually, no, uh, yeah, three LPL, three LCK, and then you have TL and Mad Lions out, it sounds like. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, which we'll call it. Um, but, yeah, no, uh, I think any L, uh, LPL team would probably beat them. Um, I, it feels like... Uh, when it comes to draft, at least, uh, LCK teams have never seemed to be too super good at adapting. Um, it, at least it feels like in a best of five series. Um, in group stage, it seems like they can sort of pull out pocket picks or like little things to help them get the advantage while also having that sort of slow play style um, that a lot of people respect at the beginning of the tournament. But when we get closer to the end of the tournament, it seems like um, people are a little bit more disrespectful and more coming to their own with the meta and stuff like that. Another reason I think LCK would do bad in a BO5 setting. Okay, and just and just to clarify, the last bit here, you, you're mm -hmm. because obviously a lot of people are going to point to Gen G beating LNG today and and Dam One, very mm -hmm. handedly dealing with FPX. You're saying doesn't count, not best of fives. Uh, yeah, I think it's just sort of beginning of the tournament, uh, like meta shifts and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. Okay, Chronicler. Go for oh, it. I thought you were going to throw it to Mox. Well, obviously, I have a lot no, to no, say no. about this take. You, you yeah, well, I feel like we should just spend just as much time with you as one. possible. So, so, um, where to begin, man? Because that was a lot. And I, I, I this, I, first of all, you know, I, I appreciate a controversial take. Um, you know, not shying away in the face of controversy, I think is great. However, when it comes to the actual points, I disagree on basically every level. I do agree that <laughs> in terms of, um, uh, groups that LCK is, is, is generally going to do well. But if you look at what we've seen from Worlds uh, uh, thus far, is that Dom1 
stomped FPX. Like it was, it was not a close game, right? There was basically nothing happening. Dumbon also are notoriously diverse. I, even even if you disregard the rest of the LCK, saying Dumbon won't mm-hmm. make it to semis at the very least, I think is in of itself. Like that, just that would be, like you can go into that for like ten minutes about why that is not a thing because the team is so incredibly has like two of the best players in the world. Uh, has looked incredibly revitalized ever since they got Dany back. Won the LCK very convincingly. Were one game of winning MSI with three players, which I think in of itself is quite the achievement. You know, didn't actually get it, but not having a bot lane generally is is not advisable when you try to win international tournaments. Um, and then when it comes to team like T1, um. And Hanwha Life, I think Hanwha Life is hard to rate. I think it's fair to say that they might not make it past quarters. Obviously, I'm not going to stake my claim on GNG making it past quarters because that's just a fool's errand. They are not very good in best of <laughs> fives. Um, but T- I, I, again, like I don't know where this this people just completely disregarding T1 comes from. Like, wh- why do people not rate them at all? Like, yes, they lost to Dom one, so is most other teams in the world going to. Um, as a T1 fan, uh, to a certain extent, I feel like every time I have hope in that team, it feels like it just all crumbles away. Um, and they've showed up at every Worlds uh, they go to, but I feel like at least in the co- past couple of years, uh, it's just not worked. That's a, one of the big reasons I think uh, they won't do well in Best of Fives. It's just because I have zero faith in T1 as a fan of them. <laughs> so so, so, so you'd time. think that if T1 and TL face off in a, a quarter scenario, TL would win? That's tough. Uh, I, I mean, yes and no, in the sense that I feel like TL actually could adapt better than T1 later in the tournament. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I maybe, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. No, I like like again. Uh, I, I I appreciate the controversy. I think that uh, th- this is another example of uh, we've. Uh, I feel like the LCK over the entire year has been judged pretty harshly by the international community. I feel like the global uh, opinion has kind of switched to saying that the LPL is now the region that just stomps everyone and is way better and like the kind of the position that LCK used to have. Whereas I think the more realistic scenario is that there is no region that is miles ahead of everyone else. I think LCK and LPL both have incredibly strong teams. I think that they have a sizable gap on the West, but it's not one that is insurmountable, especially in the best of one scenario. But I actually think it's the flip side. I think that once we get to best of fives, it's going to be way harder for Western teams to keep up. I think um, LCK, LPL teams will have a lot more depth and they will do very well as we get deeper into the tournament. I I wouldn't want to bet against Faker in a best of five scenario at Worlds. I don't think that's something you want ever. I mean, so so this kind of is interesting because one of the things I wanted to ask you, Chronicler, and you kind of already hit on it a little bit, was uh, there has been a pretty big move to saying that, like, LCK is not that great, LPL. It, like, you, I mean, you, you basically said this. One of the reasons, I think, was because of uh, even just, like, the speed at which the LCK played the, the games because a lot of people were like, well, LCK is too slow now. And the game has sped up a ton, and LPL can't keep up. We did a run it even. Um, uh, yeah, here we go. Let me pull it up. I I apologize. I'm gonna seek through the uh, the the window here, so maybe people will hear some noise or whatever. But we did a run it on the pace of play for teams in in 2021, and like uh, the LCK teams for the most part, like Damwon was in the middle, but for the most part, like T1 and Gen Gen G were really slow. Um, and, and from an average game time and uh, combined kills per minute. So I think a lot of people were like, well, that's not the way League is meant to be played anymore. And that's part of the reason that they felt like this style wasn't going to work. So I'm, I'm kind of curious from you, expanding beyond the take of whether or not these, these teams will fail in the best of five. Like, but do, you th- do you think that this slower play, play style is, is the way to play the game now? Do you think it, there's not like a way to play the game now? It's just like you can play slow, you can play fast, whatever ends up working. I'm kind of curious from, to hear from you. I don't think that, like, I think that it's easy to have the misconception. I think LCK is slower than LPL. That's definitely true. But if you look at the LCK finals in, in the first game, we had like three, four kills within the first 
what was it like four, four minutes with faker diving between two turrets yeah. and like a deep jungle <laughs> invade and t1 uh, throughout their split has had incredibly aggressive early game i think the main misconception that people kind of buy into is that just because the kills are lower doesn't mean there's not as much happening Dumb are not able to generate like two 3k gold leads without getting kills and that's not better or worse than the lpl right like people i think just kind of naturally gravitate towards high octane gameplay and that's fine i don't think that intrinsically either style is better or worse it depends on the meta it depends on the teams it depends on how they play around it right like there's too much to get into uh there to like make a, a very clear call in that regard but yeah at times you know lck teams they're a little bit more risk averse they play somewhat slower but when I talk to international fans, I sometimes have the feeling that they regard the LCK as like this glacial behemoth that doesn't make early plays and it's just like, we're just scaling. And then I'm like, no. <laughs> it's just it's like, have you have you seen what happens in like early early Dom or early Dom on Kia games? Have you seen like T1 five man committing to Herald that they shouldn't commit to and flip the game at minute eight? Like I I I, I just feel like it is somewhat of a like there is a kernel of truth to it um but then people will watch a fred at brian versus drx game and go like oh man the lck ah oh, they really suck it's like <sighs> so so just know, for, just for context nice I, I am pulling up the slide from the run it episode that sort of shows where all the teams fall on the on the chart of game time and combined kills so to, yeah, to your so point like damwon's up there but yeah, but T T1 had a 90-minute game. Oh, wait, was it? No, it was not. It was 70 minutes. Sorry. T1 had a 70-minute game. Like, that's going to throw off your average game time. T1 is not a slow team at all. Like, they had one clanker against Nongshin where both teams didn't play the video game. This, I'm not sure. Generally, I'd say T1 is a lot faster than Genji. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that's... As T1 uses goes through their bot lane to do a lot of stuff like that and whatnot. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I think um, for me, and I was someone who was not as hyped on the LCK, it felt like Damwon had a stranglehold in the region and they were, you know, people called it a one, one region, one team region a little bit. And I thought, I was one of the people who thought LNG looked better than LCK, um, Hama, uh, Hama, for example, when I was watching yeah. domestically. Yeah, I mean, they did. They were. Yeah. And and I thought, oh, well, you know, they played Ale. They have an actual cohesive play style. The top side of Anwa is a joke, you know, and like it's the Chovy show yeah. <laughs> and, you know, all this stuff. And yeah, I mean, it, it kind of worked that way, but it's, uh, it's still not that bad. <laughs> you know, like I thought that they would even potentially do well against Gen G. Well, that was fucking wrong, clearly. Um, and so like how far down the lck perception went was even worse because of plans i think and like a lot of people like me being like oh well Han was not even great and genji is probably not great either and then yep not the case <laughs> um yeah I, like to be fair like not having faith in genji i think is something that will serve you well in general in life that that's that's not a that's not i, I wanted one. to hype them up last year and they <laughs> they kind of they kind of let me down last year so and um i actually this is this is a great i i, I need to like um to to talk a little bit about the fact that Hanwa's top side is as good as it is is actually shocking because they were so bad for the entirety of summer like it was frustrating to watch and then i think morgan still is going to get exposed at some point like that that's that's bound to happen like when he's going to play against xiao who i think it's going to be a slaughter um but willa's progression has actually been super duper cool and it's something that a lot of people might not really appreciate if you haven't watched hanwa flop belly flop their way to eighth place in the lck <laughs> i i it's, it's an interesting uh situation because i i mean, this is part of the reason i'm so happy you're honest because it does feel like so many people including myself i think we're discounting lck because uh it just it yeah. felt like this was uh the, the new reign of lpl i think for many years there'd been a, a thought that well someday lpl will overtake because they just have like they'll they'll catch up on infrastructure and they have so many players and all this stuff and then their league is so big and it felt like eventually that ended up happening and maybe maybe we're seeing the the turnaround. Um, I feel or not like the turnaround, the, um, but the contesting. 
I will say the, the LCK versus LPL rivalry about who's a stronger region is pretty interesting right now. Dom Juan winning over FPX, not surprising how dominant it was. Pretty surprising for, I think, a lot of people. Yeah, I'd agree. And then once EDG and T1 play, I feel like that whoever wins that one will either it'll balance out and it'll be like, ooh, it's still close between the two regions. But if LCK wins that one too, it's feeling pretty, uh, pretty heavily LCK favorite. Yeah. Yeah, well, Faker, that's still... Faker says he thinks uh, LCK yeah. is the strongest region. So uh, there you go. Of Straight course he would. <laughs> uh, Flair, thank you so much for the call. Uh, you'll be laughing at everybody in the chat and us whenever LCK teams are getting shit on in best of fives in about uh, <laughs> yep. 10 days or so. So we appreciate look at looking forward to having you back on the show when that happens so you can gloat. Um, we'll even yeah, try absolutely. to... Absolutely. We'll try to get Chronicler yeah. in so that he he can just take the, the beating from you. Uh, anything you want to shout out before we go on to our next caller? Uh, just the show, to be honest. Uh, I come from a different... I, I play a lot of CS, and I'm in that scene a decent bit. And uh, there's nothing like this where you can come and be a little pocket analyst for the day and, and or for a minute and, you know, give your take and stuff like that. I, I really like the format, and and it's really fun, seriously. It's, it's a great thing to have this sort of show in the scene. Thanks so much. Yeah, I think Mark and I have, it's it's the longest running show Mark and I have ever done, uh, probably by by two times. I don't know, Mark. I don't know what the longest one you've ever done, but it's I don't know. And it's also the most original show I've ever done. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, we're coming up on Ooh. 200 episodes, so that's always nice to hear. Thank you so much, Flair, uh, and we'll catch you next time. Have a good one. All right, uh, off Mark goes to the next caller, and uh, in the meantime, thank you to uh, Crash Cat. And Benjamin, actually, I might have already shouted them out. Any any other subbers? Any other primers? Can you guys move your cursor over the screen right now? It's just a test. See if there's a little purple crown in the right corner. Click that, and then if it just says like prime sub or free sub, just click that. I just want to see if the functionality is working. It's just a test. Uh, Turd Ferguson says I miss Kelby. Kelby was in the chat earlier. I don't know if he just showed up to laugh at at NA takes or anti LCK takes or what, but. Uh, I don't see him anymore, so maybe he's gone. Uh, let's see. Is that uh, they are here? Thirteen snakes, oh, oh. all thirteen of them uh, in the chat uh, or in the call. Where are you calling from? Indianapolis. Indianapolis. What do you want to talk about on the show? Um, I'm kind of the the flip side of the G2 call earlier. Um, I think G2 is going to have a hard time finding players to replace the people they have with because Perks isn't there to help recruit anymore. People have always wanted to play with them. We've never seen that um, really play out with Caps in the past. Um, I was watching Ellis' stream earlier today, and he was talking about potentially Flippo going back top lane and Philosang because of the Caps connection with Fnatic. But other than that, I don't think they're going to be able to find people easily. I, I pulled this, Travis, because you... I talked about it earlier, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I did talk about this earlier. I think on on the stream, and so this is good. I'm, I'm glad we have this conversation. I also talked to Mark about it a bit. Uh, so, in, so I I agree with you, but for not the same reasons that you're listing. So I do, I do. Well, I, I think uh, it's really interesting whenever you have a team like G2, and I think TSM kind of going through this too, where they have this dynasty. And then they start to let that dynasty go. A lot of like these players that have been around for a long time or like the coaching staff or the people that are around. And then they, the, the big question is always going to be like, okay, how much of this was like they had the right lineup at the right time or they were able to sort of build from, you know, the majority of the foundation that was there versus how much of it is just the organization is great at building winning teams. And what... Car what is happening right now is that Carlos, uh, I think, is making the bet on himself and his organization to be able to, like, essentially start from scratch. I mean, to be fair, like, Caps and any Ankos are, like, a great starting point, but they have to essentially completely start over and hopefully build something again in a world where I think there's probably more competition than ever in the LEC, uh, especially with teams like Mad Lions, Rogue looks good, M Misfits is getting more and more relevant. I think this year they, they did a good job of that. There's more money coming in. Uh, I am not worried about their ability to recruit though. 
because G2 is a very big name brand. Uh, I think Carlos is making a very good decision by at least publicly saying like, oh yeah, we're going to send these players wherever they want to go because you're, you're sending the message like, aha, we don't keep you in prison or send you to different teams that you don't want to go to like last year. Um, and, uh, and so I think, I think that's a very good decision. And I, I ultimately, I just think G2 probably has a lot of money in terms of what LEC spends. Uh, I don't have the same insight, admittedly, into the budgets of those teams like I do in the LCS, but like, I do think, I mean, at the very least, he's going to get a pretty good war chest just from transferring a lot of his current contracts over to other teams. So I don't think he's going to have any recruiting issues. The big question is just like, okay, like even if you can recruit a lot of the players that you want, who are the players that you are going to want and what are you going to be able to do with them, um, especially with the completely different coaching staff and all that stuff. So... That is my big question for G2 next year. And I would not be surprised if they end up being like, like, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I think G2 fans might need to settle in for a bit of a ride because I don't, I, I think it's unlikely that out the gate, they rebuild into a, another um, split winning, split, split, split world's competitive team, etc. Mark or Chronicler? I don't know if either of you feel strongly about this. I think uh, uh yeah you go first mark okay cool i i think you you said a lot of stuff i i feel about it like any brand as big as they are with as much history as they can will be able to probably convince erl talent on the way up to take a shot at them and there seems like there's a lot of it um i feel like maybe they can get some from other teams you know i don't think that they'll be as the caller put it a little bit i mean like there is a, a pretty obvious history of perks messaging people and getting them from other top teams to join and maybe that aspect's gone but i don't i don't feel you have to rely on that to put a good team together um so i do think the options are there i just think to travis's point it's not going to be as easy as just like sign the best players that we can find and all five are going to gel together like i i think a lot of the times really good teams have a ramp up period of a year or two even um and there's usually a couple like roster iterations that come through where you're, you're swapping pieces out until it gels perfectly uh, hundred uses is an example of this mad lions rogue are examples of this um the original g2 one you know a trick and like some of those guys but then they didn't really become serious world's threats until the, the most like that final iteration in 2019 i guess you could say and then even this one fell flat despite supposedly being an upgrade for reckless so i think it just speaks to how quickly things can go wrong and how much time it takes to really find like that lightning in a bottle roster. So yeah, I expect it to be a difficult return to the top for G2 that will take longer than a year. So true. That's interesting. I'm, I, I really don't know. I think it's kind of hard to read, but if I can trust esteemed and trustworthy sort of LEC Wulu, we're going to have uh, Mr. Broken Blade in the top lane for, uh, um for g2 and then you have like g2 or that broken blade jank jankos caps just slap a good lfl bot lane in there you know plug and play let's go see how it does um jokes aside i do really agree with you mark that to see g2 actually go to the behemoth that they were i have no clue whether they'll reach that level soon again um and if they will because i think that's the cool thing right it's good if there's always new teams coming up it's not good if a uh, single team just endlessly reigns over a specific region. Yeah, it's pretty fucking boring. Also, yeah. that team ends up getting like so cocky and arrogant, and it's just it's a it's painful for for working with mm -hmm. them sometimes. Uh, no, no, it's just a general statement, by the way, not making any allusions to any specific teams in general. Um, yeah, of course not. Definitely not, dude. For sure not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thirteen stakes. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I don't know if you have any follow-ups or any thoughts on any of this stuff. No, I agree with everything you guys said. Um, I just think if you think look, look back at G2's past signings, Trick leaves and then immediately they get Jankos. Um, their bot lane Zven Mithy leaves and they go out and get Caps and Nikki. Like, I don't think they're going to get those big splashes moving forward. I don't think they won't be good, but I just, those top tier everyone won't necessarily want to play with them were those like guys the all top tier the moment they joined though like i i thought that like a lot of the stuff emerged sorry i guess i was i should say i it 
like the original G2 building, I don't feel like was a situation where they were just like, we're going to go out and get all the best players from everything. Eventually they got to that point, but like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I mean, I'm we've been hearing about the, to Travis's point, we've been hearing about the um, perks and tampering ever since Ben and Methy left. Like, and then when oh. perks leaves, they go out and get reckless, but I, I did, don't necessarily I... think. <laughs> I didn't realize that I, when I you said you don't have yeah. perks to recruit for them anymore, you were meaning perks literally going out and tampering and recruiting that way. Well, I mean, oh, that's I, what, I, I that's what, what they've done for five years. I mean, they've been doing that forever. Every single time they signed someone, it's, well, perks was talking to him when he was on someone else's team. Well, they didn't need him to they, get like, he reckless. He just doesn't do anything. Well, that's because he was leaving. I know, but I I'm that just was saying, more like... reckless wanted off of, fin- I get what you're saying, but I think that was more reckless wanted money and he wanted off of Fnatic more so than... To play with Perks, but yeah. I, whenever anyone talks about Reckless, he's kind of his own unique person. Anyway. Maybe Perks can still recruit for them. He can basically be like their their agent from North America or whatever. LS uh, was joking that to see if um, C9 would trade Perks for trade back for Perks, but just just joking, for the recruiting but that would be that would be very interesting. Yeah. Uh, anything you want to shout out here at the end, Snakes? Before we take a quick break. Yeah, just I would love to see you do more stuff like you did. I think it was last fall or two falls ago when you went to China. I really enjoyed that type of thing. Yeah, I, I mean, kind of, so you're like major thing, but I really enjoy those types of things, and no one really in the scene does it. Yeah, you're talking about when I did went and and Brody and I did the documentary trip uh, where we yes. went to to the LPL. Yeah, I really yeah. like that. I mean, I would love to do anything right now that involves me going anywhere. Uh, League of Legends related like it's been so tough covering everything remotely uh, I, I'm very envious of of Kobe who gets to even even if he's not in Iceland he's left me alone in this apartment and uh, he gets to go hang out with everybody I just it's tough uh, so I, I appreciate you you shouting that out those snakes so hopefully yeah. hopefully soon I'll get to travel again we can do cool projects like that again uh, either way thanks so much snakes and we'll catch you next time all right, we shouted out Alienware earlier. Although I did, I did forget to mention, by the way, that they have a big event happening this Friday, a big stream, uh, two p.m. Central, uh, which is twelve o'clock over here on Pacific. So, if the LCS or sorry, the World's Games are done, maybe you guys can go check that out. Uh, thank you to AW Citrine in the chat for uh, mentioning it. Uh, also on the sponsor docket, though, I want to give a big shout out to Gamefield for sponsoring the show. Uh, thank you so much to Gamefield for sponsoring Hotline League. It's fantastic to have them on board. I'm going to double check, but I think I saw some people ordering it. But they are winding down the uh, the sherbet flavor. It's pronounced sherbet is the way I, I relearned that. Uh, I used to call it sherbet. Um, what did you say, Mark? Nothing. Anyway, <laughs> they have Courageous Sherbet Zero available at Gamefield.com slash Travis. Please head over there. And uh, if you do like the zero calorie versions of these types of drinks, please give it a try. Uh, it's a limited time only. It's very cool that they're doing this. And uh, by the way, you could win. You have a chance to win uh, Courage swag if you like Courage. He was in that video this week uh, with a very uh, impressive person. A mini fridge, or even a personal message from Courage himself. You could ask him what it was like to be in the little Nas video. Uh, either way, but either way, use code Travis. I know I keep saying either way. Use code Travis. Save 5% on your order. Really appreciate it. Oh, and by the way, that's the other thing that happened. They, uh, they've they officially launched Season 2 of their Victory Pass. If you're not familiar with their Victory Pass, it's basically like a battle pass, but for shopping for, for Game Fuel. So as you buy uh, Game Fuel, you'll level up your Victory Pass and get all sorts of cool unlocks, uh, discount codes, all sorts of neat stuff. So they have socks, by the way. You can get game feel socks. If by the way, if you get level, if you get to level six and you get game feel socks, please tweet uh, me a picture of the socks. You don't have to be wearing them. I'm not, you know, that's not my thing. But either way, <laughs> it would be cool to see because I'm very curious about these socks when I saw them. It's, I'm intrigued. All right, uh, thank you so much to Game Feel for sponsoring the show. Mark is off to grab who may be actually we might have time for an extra caller it's well i had two people in there and someone disappeared it was their name was like tall tala or something and they had a tape and then yeah they're not in the they fucked off anymore. yeah they got tired and fell asleep or waking up maybe the i don't know yeah anyways i'll get the other caller and then try and find one more okay cool 
Uh, off mark goes. Thank you to where are we? Mega Blue, uh, D Director Donut, Sherikon, uh, Wickhelm, Shadow Spectre, and Reno 9K. Thank you, everybody, for your subs. I'm very much appreciated. Mark is grabbing our second to last caller here right now. And we're just waiting for him or her to join. Hello. Invicta is here. Invicta, where are you calling from? I'm calling from the great island of Tiloé in Chile. Oh, nice. Okay, fantastic. You've been on before. Yep, I have. And okay. how, have you, how, how are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing, doing great. A little fatigued because I've uh, been, been doing stuff all day long. Uh, but it's it's good to uh, to be doing a hotline league. It's always fun to talk about this stuff, especially during Worlds. Invicta. I see, and I appreciate it because uh, the videos you've been uploading to YouTube have been great. Thank you. Thank you. I, I hope uh, everyone feels that way as they go over there and watch them. Uh, what do you want to talk about on, on tonight's episode? I want to talk about um, Fnatic. Um, I think they will make it past uh, to group stage. I think they will make it to quarterfinals with or without upset, despite the recent news. Oh, okay. So they're not going to be... Do you, do you think that they will be held back? Like, would they have performed better than with upset? Um, of course, um, upset is tremendously good. He is stellar. He's world-class and all. And it, it, of course, nothing was expected, I mean, uh, for anyone. But um, I think... Despite Bean being a liability today for uh, Fnatic's game, I think he will step up and be ready for the second week of groups. I think uh, he has had a low preparation time, low scrim time, and of course, like it's a fact that he's been around with the rest of the team for a while, but it's not the same as being the one playing against, against um, all the other world-class players. It's not like they expected Upset was leaving, so I think with more experience, with more time with the, uh, the rest of the team, he will adapt to um, Fnatic's cohesion, which is one of their greatest strengths. So, yeah. So, you, uh, and just to be clear, you had mentioned that he'll step up and ready for, for week two of groups. I guess we should call it set two of groups because now it's all happening with yeah, him. Yeah, that's but, right. But uh, that's do, right. Yeah. does that mean that you're not expecting much out of him for the next two days? Um, maybe for the second one, not much for tomorrow, but I think, yeah, I think he will, he will adapt fastly enough. Uh, I, I think he played very well in EU Masters and I think he, he just needs some confidence. Gotcha. Well, I don't know if he's going to get it against RNG. That's my only worry for him. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, so uh, I don't know, Mark or, or Chronicler, which of you wants to go first, but I don't know if either of you felt strongly about Bean's performance today or had much, gleaned much from him. Mm. Yeah, I I actually, I, I would like this take to be right, but I don't think it is. I really like Fnatic. I think the upset, not making it, actually making it towards and then not being able to go is one of the most heartbreaking things to happen all year in terms of league because it's been like such a storyline over the last few years and he has been considered as like one of the stronger players right similar to like afari where like people knew the player was good but it just didn't really come together um i do think that losing upset and this has nothing to do with the quality of player that bean is is not going to be recoverable for Fnatic. i think that group is too harsh i would have actually thought post what i've seen thus far that they were going to uh, end second over Hanwha. But I swapped my prediction to Hanwha making it out second after seeing Upset leave because it doesn't really matter how good Bean is. Um, which, again, I think Bean is a great player. I think he's LEC caliber. Uh, and I think that he will age very, very well. Or, you know, he will have a good a future ahead of him. But going from EUM to Worlds is a humongous step up. And even that would be within your own team, right? That you've scrimmed with, that you've prepared with for months, but you are basically thrown into a team that's not used playing around you. And then I don't think reasonably anyone can, or like there's there's very few people that can perform under the circumstances. I think that Fnatic is not going to make it out. I don't think they'll have the time. I think that the level of bot lanes especially is too good because you can argue... And I think you should argue, even with what we've seen thus far, that like the Hanwha top side is pretty subpar, right? 
Yep. But then look at the bot lanes. Uh, Gala Ming, uh, Ga yeah, Gala Ming, obviously insane. And then Deft and Vista is also it, like they're really, really good. Like it's it's Deft is getting all the attention in that lane, but but Vista also has improved very steadily over this year. And I just I just don't see an angle. And we haven't even talked about PSG. And I'm pretty sure that PSG, even though they had a slow start, is gonna like get a couple of wins in that group as well, which makes it even harder because that team is too good to just go like uh, without Zero, winning anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you saw even yesterday, right? Like those angles that Maple and, and Hanabi were able to found, they will against Fnatic as well. Yeah, I think uh, PSG, I was memeing them a little bit as soon as that game started and they just got slammed by RNG about, oh, you know, they're really just uh, as good as Doggo was, you know? <laughs> they were carried by Doggo at MSI. And then that team fight in the bot lane and like almost coming back in the game, making it a little dicey. I was like, okay, maybe maybe I should put some, some more respect into this team uh so yeah i don't think you can just totally discredit psg um i would have probably also predicted Fnatic over hamwa before upset leaving um and i think you could see some of like how that could work it, even in the game that happened where you know adam ditches top lane he runs mid they they target chovy a little bit early on yeah. and what had you know, really good early levels yeah exactly so like i, I think they're, they they had a game plan that could have worked but without one of your staple carries in your lineup, it just, it becomes too hard. And I think you had a great point, Chronicler, about the gap that you're subbing in for. You know, it's not like, oh yeah, I got bumped up to the, the LEC. It's like, you got bumped up two levels, three levels potentially. From Very like, short notice. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. got bumped out of your regional league, in past your actual like premier league, past play-ins, into like, you know, international competition of a pretty stacked group. Like, yeah, that's... I might That's have girl boss a little too close to the sun. Yeah. So so I, I, I'm with Chronicler. Like, I, I think the caller is right that Fnatic will get better over the course of the tournament, and I don't think they'll go winless either. I think they'll pick up some wins. Um, but I feel like it'll be Talon, PSG Talon and Fnatic, like two and four, maybe grabbing an upset over one of the, the, the big winners or one of the big teams. I'm not ready to call it on Hanwha. I can still see them collapse. Like I, I, I have, I have some trust issues when it comes to that team. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting slightly more enthusiastic. Uh, and and Atlas has had faith since like week six of the LCK. Uh, so, so he's he's been there for the, the entire ride. But I could still see Hanwha collapse and like have it be PSG. But with Fnatic in their current state i don't think they'll make it i think it's really sad i think upset actually would have made a really big difference there because if you look at like the laning pressure that death was able to find in that solo lane i don't think upset would have folded to the same extent and i don't think you could really blame bean for that it's just thrust into this position uh, oh. so there's some random stuff i see so what's this about griffin had bigger problems and still made it out of groups are we saying it's that a... Fnatic should be a failure if they don't make it out of groups because griffin did before when it's like the... Griffin, Griffin had four of the most talented players in like the entire fucking LCK. It's like, it's well, not really in the entire comparison. world, like Tarzan, Chovy, and Viper are all still like legitimately uh... some of the best players in their roles in the entire fucking world. Like <laughs> Fnatic, no flame to them. They have probably zero players in top five positions in the world. Yeah, yeah, that's not really a fair comparison. It's like it's it's yeah. I don't know. I've, I I I personally think that this group will have a sour taste for me, even if Hanwha does make it out, because we don't know what would have happened. Maybe Hanwha still would have made it, right? Like there, there's a fat chance that with Hanwha surging up as much as they have, or PSG if they end up being it, that like Fnatic would not have done it. Because I do think that Fnatic, even with upset, would still run into the problem that they beat themselves. Not to the same extent that like C9, for example, did yesterday, but uh, Fnatic going for that scuttle after Bwipo has secured like a double CS lead is a really good example of like, I don't think those tendencies would have gone anywhere, right? But your entire map state would change just by having upset. And I'm I'm kind of sad that we don't really get to know what that would have been like. Yeah, it's always really like, that's the, the tragedy anytime you have one of these international events and somebody... You know, it's like the the five folks that qualified to the event are not able to play together. It's just like, damn, this feels so bad. Um, it's really unfortunate. Invicta, yeah. 
I guess, you know, as much as we're sad about that, you're still not sad about it because you still probably think that uh, <laughs> Fnatic's going to do it. Yeah, I'm very hopeful. Maybe I'm a little bit high on copium, but uh, <laughs> I really think some of the things, um, well, about the, the game of today, I think MF was like to be player to be played around, and that was a lot of pressure that Bean had to take on his shoulders for his first game at Worlds uh, against, well, of course, the opponents he has. And I think Fnatic will, ad will adapt on the coming days um, to towards a different strategy. And of course, yeah, he is not upset. Upset is an outstanding weak side player, but I, th I still think, um, yeah, that with time, with some time, uh, Bean will step up and uh, I think Fnatic has a good shot still. Very good. Well, we'll see how things play out. Uh, anything you want to shout out, Invicta? Um, only to the Yorick Mains Discord and every Julian that is um, listening to Hot Lightning. Very good. Thank you for the uh, for the call. It's always great to hear your voice and uh, looking forward to, as, as I say with everybody who calls in with these hot takes, it'll be great when you're on the show and uh, giving your, your victory la loop lap. Victory lap. There we go. <laughs> uh, having you on. Thank Thanks you. so much for the call, and we'll catch you next time. All right. Uh, I'm noticing that Mark does not have anybody else in the waiting room. Uh, no, I mean, there's not much. There's only one person who gave a take, and it wasn't even like clear what they said. Full NA hopium with a positive LCK reaction. Yeah. I'm well, like, well, I don't, I don't really know what that take is. Well, it's okay. We've got a little bit of time left. Let's. Uh... Uh, okay, we, we got bailed on. We got stood up by a caller, dude. Skyella, put your take in the in the chat if you want to, uh, if you want to get on. Um, no, no promises, but if you have one, don't put it into Twitch chat. You should put it into Discord. I'll fill really quickly while uh, Mark keeps an eye out for any emergent things here by talking to Chronicler a little bit more. Uh, okay, Chronicler, do you? We we had that call earlier about. Uh, LCK getting crushed in quarters. What are your expectations for LCK as a whole? Like, do you think that they're going to get stopped at any given point in time? Um, I expect, it, it, I can, like I said, I can see Genji bake out of groups. I expect Genji to immediately fold the moment they make a single mistake at any point in a best of five, which will inevitably happen. Um, so I, I don't expect them to do very well. Hanwha, I, like I said, no clue. You could you could tell me the team would somehow make finals at this point, and I would be like, yeah, that I guess that makes sense. But also, if they drop out of groups or or quarters, that would not shock me. My dream finals, and this is me going like, I don't think this is reasonable. It's it's DKT one. Yeah, it's too good. It's too good, right? It's like it's fake of fighting for his fourth world a world title. Like it's T1 with some of the best individual plays, and then it's up against Showmaker, who I think is the first LCK player to, if he would win Worlds again, come even remotely close to resembling anything that Faker has done. Khan is going to retire after this year. He's going to go to military service, and that's a huge loss for LCK League, or just League in general, I'd say. Guy's fucking hilarious. Um, what I think will happen, it will probably be Damon Kia versus an LPL team. Cool thing about LPL to me is that I don't really know which team is going to be the best because they have like a lot of depth and I think it depends on how the meta evolves because I think RNG, FPX, EBG to me all seem like they could make it to World's Finals without too much of a hassle provided that they find a playstyle within the current meta that fits them. Um, I think LNG is the only unlikely one. If you, yeah. you or, know, um... losing, losing to Genji makes me worried. You stay Showmaker challenging, challenging Faker's Legacy is one of the few. I feel well, like not the, yet, but. right? But I mean, like, if if they win again, it's starting to get there. I feel like Doinby is probably the only other one, but he's been playing a long time and like had some retirement rumors before, so I don't know if he'll ever get there. But if it's, he won again, he would yeah. probably start entering the conversation. But, but, but yeah, but but even then, I think uh, Doinby, in terms of domestic success, hasn't really hit the benchmarks that you kind of need to. Where a showmaker has now won LCK three times in a row, but yeah. then, like again. The fact that we're talking about, like, okay, so you win your second Worlds, and then maybe we can start getting close to compare. It's like it says so much about, like, how stupid good Faker was. It's like, yeah, yeah, winning two Worlds and, like, three domestic titles is still not really enough to make a fair comparison. 
Well, the yeah. thing is, too, he's still fucking just, playing, so it's, yeah. it's like... Yeah. I, I was going to say that I tried to do... <laughs> I told Mark about this. It's up on my YouTube channel already, but Mark and I concocted this joke uh, of using like the old man faker uh, Photoshop that somebody did, and I asked him... I showed him the picture in the interview and asked him if he felt like that because... Uh, he's playing with players. I know uh, some people have talked about this now, but like players on his team were 11 years, uh, the age yeah, of 11 yeah, whenever yeah, yeah. he won his yeah. first championship. And yeah. it's funny to me because Faker does not, I think because he was pretty young whenever he first Yeah, he was won. really young. Um, and then, I don't know, it's just, it's Faker, so you don't really tend to think of him getting old. It's just like, it's weird to even think about that. Uh, but he is pretty veteran senior by League of Legends esports standards and he is still so good it's actually wild yeah it's actually wild yeah it's it's unreal like yeah. i i don't think a lot of people would say that he's the best mid laner for like the last couple of years but the fact that after like what 7 8 years he is still within the conversation for like top 3 top 4 is i don't know it's nuts well, let's hang on. Let's do. Uh, do, you, do you guys mind if we do some quick predictions since we have a little bit of extra time here at the end? Sure. Okay. Uh, so, what is uh, everyone's prediction? I okay. So this should we should be able to speed run this pretty quickly. Group A: Damwon and FPX out. Yes. Yeah. Yep. T1 that's, that's EDG out. Group B. Yep. Uh, RNG Hanwa out. Group C. That's what it's looking like right now, I think. Yeah. Okay. Here's a good question for you. Is it Gen G, LNG, and Group D? Ooh. I'll be honest, man. I don't know. It might be Team Liquid. I might be on the Team Liquid hype train. I think for Worlds, it would be glorious if it's Gen G. Or actually, no, for Worlds, it would be better if it's Matt TL, probably. I think that the unfortunate reality of Genji as a team is that they are probably going to make it and then, you know, look really good and then not get anywhere. I think that's too likely of a scenario to happen. So it's probably Genji and then I legit have no clue. Group D is like the, the pick and killer. Like, who yeah. knows? Okay, so uh, here's... You can, you, you can make any two teams, say any two teams make it out of that group and I'd like be like, yeah. I, I kind of want Gen G and LNG to get out just because I think I saw this on, on Reddit elsewhere, but I'd already been thinking about this a lot. I'm so not a fan of like, I think this world's really shows. <laughs> I see the, where you're going with this already. Oh, the format. You, fucking, you curmudgeon. What you curmudgeon? Mark, I thought you agree with me on this. Are you just switching? I, it up? I agree. I don't like the format, but you're saying you want all four lck and lpl teams to get out and then you're going to want an all china all lck bracket on two separate sides because it'll force and riot to finally like do something about the format everyone universally will be like this sucks and so then they'll actually come through and do something different Travis like, wants so... to int into year of worlds so that riot changes if you're going to int any year how about the one where it's all taking place in a studio You're not wrong. Could, couldn't this year. Yeah, like, it, this is the year that this should happen because, like, I... It is boring to me. Like, I didn't set this up intentionally, but, like, I could have. It is boring to me that we just go, like, okay, group A, LCK, LPL, group B, LCK, LPL, group C, LCK, LPL, group D, maybe not LCK, LPL. Like, and, and, and I get it. I get it that that is, like in some ways just the fault of these other regions for not being competitive enough, you know, and for LCK and LPL being so good. But it is very likely that this is a reality that we will be in or something close to it for quite some time going forward. I don't have a ton of faith that North America is going to suddenly skyrocket up and like, yeah, it's like, it's the only times it's like, other than that is, is like, okay, maybe LEC has like a G2 or something around to like mix things up. I get sometimes they get multiple teams up, but you get my point. So I just like, I am ready. I I was not so anti. I know the format's been this way for a while. I think people can probably remember the Hotline League a couple weeks ago, uh, where I was like, "Wait, 
So this could be all, and it's been this way for a while. It's like this could just be all LCK and LPL teams after group stage. And I'm just like, since then I've been like, I want this to not be the case. So I'm, I'm actually like that is the the nice thing is like I will obviously be really happy if Mad or Team Liquid make it out or both. Uh, but it will feel somewhat vindicating if Gen G and LNG get out because I do think like it would cause such a clear issue that it would, right, would come in and be like, what do you okay, mean? I, as an as an LCK fan, that sounds great. I love that. No, I'm I I'm mean, kidding. You I, can I, have I, all I, your I LCK your teams out and still cool. not have the other four be LPL teams. No, that that not that, that that like last year's bracket was it was was a tragedy. Like both the G two, like the entire. I, I could base. I didn't really have a good read on on any part of the uh, upper half of the bracket, like the LPL side. But the moment I saw that bot side, like the LCK with G two drawn, I knew what was going to happen because you knew DRX were going to get stomped for you. Like that one was pretty basic. Obviously, Gen G are going to get gutter stomped by a G two that's you know, even on a remotely decent level. And then, like, you never got to see Dom on top. You know, that would have been really fun. Or maybe DRX Fnatic, I think, would have been a DRX Sooning, I think, would have been a great series. I think, um, I mean, there's a lot of people I know who have the opinion that, like, well, if you're not better than those teams, why should you go further in the tournament? Or, like, why should the, I don't know, second E or the first EU seed, you know, if they can't beat the fourth LPL seed to get out of groups, well, then they just suck, you know, or whatever. I understand that line of logic and like the fart sniffing smug, like I just want to watch the best league of legends in the world kind of, you know, I don't, I don't care where it comes from, but at the end of the day, the reality is for the longevity of the sport, that's actually probably not the best thing. And like having each region have, better parity is, is better even if it's a little bit admittedly forced in the sense that like well we don't let's put the fifth lpl seed in next and see if the number one eu team can beat them okay let's put the uh, these number one seeds in play-ins and make them play and let's just put the top eight teams as lck and lpl and and then everyone else has to earn their way in including the fifth and sixth from these these regions you know like you can start getting pretty far down the rabbit hole if, if your idea is like oh we just want the best teams from each re like best teams in the world so um i don't know i i understand where travis is coming from yeah you so. can both have like the best teams in the world play themselves and also continue to ensure that you have a format where like i mean uh, okay i'm not not trying to be dismissive of plans but i think a lot of people really start to get excited for worlds at groups <laughs> and if this year eu and na only get to watch players of their own thing. Like in this month long tournament, you're getting to watch e EU and NA play for one week, <laughs> six days, you know, six days uh, beyond plans. Like, <sighs> I don't think that's a great, I don't think that's a great format. I just don't think it's that great. Um, yeah. So I think that that would be, no, I, 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 I think that it's, it's fine um, to, to criticize the format. I think that me personally, I don't know if like outside of the the draw being as bad as it was last year, I really hope that that doesn't happen. Um, I personally don't mind as much, but that makes sense because I get to see all my favorite teams perform throughout the entirety of the tournament, or at least a large part of it. So it's inherently like, why would I want to change it when it's good for me? Yes. Right? Yeah. But that doesn't mean that it's not. It could still be good um, for you, and you can like if they introduce well, some sort of double elimination yeah. bracket where like you have, yeah, exactly, teams right? Like that, that that that's not uh, basically that's not an excuse to not look for improvement regardless. Yeah. But I don't think it's happening, unfortunately, because I do. You think, think they're just going to stick with this format indefinitely? Or are you saying you don't? Um, think I don't know. Time? Yeah, I mean, I, for for the near future, yeah, I don't think that I don't see them. Some I would be very happy if they did. But I don't um, I don't think that they will change it uh, in the recent years. Maybe maybe you are right, Travis. Maybe we do need the full civil war. So that's what I'm saying. Again. Yeah, so no, let's, actually, the, let's, you know, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's have, get it. Let's have like the worst outcome just to demonstrate the issues with this ahead Burn of NA down. having worlds next year, so that when I'm touring to all these different uh, cities, I'm not just watching 
LCK versus LCK and LPL versus LPL matches at an international event. Again, I've done nothing against LCK or LPL. It's just I uh, I think there's probably cooler formats. I, I believe enough in Riot Games to that, create something more exciting. Then again, that does also rest on the assumption that the games then should be more competitive and that i think is a key problem because i also think people will get very sick very quickly of seeing an na team get like stomped free oh by the current flavor of the month lpl or lck team right like it, it, it would also require more parity in terms of region strength just give us more think... mad lion tl matches you know figure out a way to do that yeah okay that point like, so even, there's, even there's... rogue c9 we we lost you know but it no, was, it was good. Like, that was good it was that like was a great. monkey knife fight you know in the cage where the the <laughs> korean lc uh, lpl teams are watching us go and like rogue should be stomping cloud nine but they keep kind of throwing and it's just like uh, I mean, it's fun. I'm having a hoot watching that game. I just know it was that really enjoyable. Yeah, we just have no chance. Mistakes. And yeah. as much as I would not like to watch LCK or LPL teams just continue to crush North America, uh, you know, no, no offense to some of these these folks who I have great business relationships with, but it's not that bad to just watch NA team owners have to watch their three million dollar players <laughs> get completely crushed over and over again by. LCK and LPL teams. I, by random 17-year-old Korea. Yeah. Who the fuck is up Korean off? Challenge. Why didn't we scout him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like they're they're writing the check for that player as they're watching their current player they bought this year uh, just get and destroyed. If, if that, that, the player that they buy will then lose to the next random 17-year-old yes, yes, exactly. Chinese top laner who can yes. play jacks well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just it, it's a, I mean, oh, it's a, yeah, exactly as disappointing as it is to watch our North American players get destroyed by LCK or LPL teams. It's also kind of like a preview of future North American players in some way, you know. Uh, all right, that is the show. Uh, thanks to everybody who called in. Thank you so much to Chronicler for getting yeah. a very little sleep and then coming on the show. It was great to have you on, and especially because obviously we were talking so much about LCK this episode. Um, before I give you your chance to shout out and plug whatever you want, I'm going to throw it to Mark. Mark, what do you want to shout out and plug now that you're done casting? Uh, shout out to the new season of Survivor coming out. Well, glad that's back. Um, shout out Paul DeRock. I got a bunch of uh, videos about him queued up. I'm ready to, to listen to them while I play Genshin Impact Who is that? Uh, in a couple days, I'm sure. How's uh, who is that? You don't know who Paul Dirac is? The no. Dirac equation, second quantization. Jesus Christ! How do you not know? Oh, hang on, that's coming up on the Googles. Uh... He discovered antimatter. He 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 merged special relativity with fucking the Schrodinger equation. Basically, invented QFT or like one of the bases for it. Come on. I like that one because the cat's both dead and alive, which is how I prefer. No, that's the. Cats. I'm not mean enough to. That's not uh, the wave equation. That's. Anyway, uh, what do you got for us, Chronicler? What do you want to shout uh, out? Yeah, so uh, shout out, you know, shout out to uh, to the LCK. I've had a great year. Make sure you watch challenges next year if you want to know who's going to beat NA in like three, two, two, three years down the line. Um, or if you're an over enthusiastic owner and you want to look for up and coming talent, uh, and uh, listen to "Run Away with Me" by Carly Rae Jepsen, it's a very <laughs> underrated pop song, and I would like. I thought to... she only made one song in her whole career. What is this other one? No, 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 no. I will have no Carly Rae Jepsen slam. She's great, great I... pop artist. You know, like it's 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 a really good example of. I really like music, and I really like to go like you know like scour music blogs and and look at like and go go hardcore on the radio head vinyl and, but sometimes you just want fun pop music and then you just put on your your carly ray jepsen emotion album and you just have a good time so please all do that especially if you need it after rough worlds games which might happen tonight what are your what are your thoughts on sour uh that's uh olivia rodrigo right i liked yeah, it her album. i thought it was good yeah uh, it's 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 a little you know, it's 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 a little too teenage girl musicy for me at times, but I can appreciate the the songwriting. I thought it was enjoyable. I thought I got a driver's about. license. You don't connect with that song anymore. That's not, that's I've not grown it. it. 
I, 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 let's be honest. Isn't there like there? There's a part of me that does. You know, yeah, it's that's not what a I'm particularly saying. large you thought. Forever, I can, and I was 16, and I thought that meant the next 70 years of our relationship because I have a good yeah. grasp of what forever is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mark, you know, like, don't I be think that's a fun. grouchy old man, okay? <laughs> we all only Why? have the perspectives of old man. our own moment. I know that you are you are an old sea captain listening to a 17 year old. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, run away with me, um, Carly Rae Jepsen. One of the best song, pop songs uh, ever written. Big banger. I, I really appreciate Karnak. I've learned a lot about him this episode. That has made me feel like we should... I mean, you guys we can't get along hang out because well. we live in different continents. But you like fantasy books. Uh, you know, I, I, I disagree with your assessment of Sour. I think it's an impeccable album uh, that has no flaws. But uh, still, I it's, it's good to hear that we have... Uh, some good stuff in common. All oh, right. yeah, and, uh, and 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 shout out to board games. Board games are the best. You should play great board games to make your life better. I've been trying to play board games with Mark, but... Uh, It'll happen. Yeah. Any day now. That. Well, now, if we're going to do it with Kobe, we can't do it because he's out of town. If you uh, need recommendations for board games, please let me know. I have a very extensive list. I was just of... going through my list or my, my board games recently. I have so several that I... I do. I have one that's like reverse monopoly that begins with an M that I forget the name of. Uh, I don't know. Somebody in Twitch chat will get it. But anyway, uh, for me, thanks to uh, Chronicler and Mark, of course, and stay tuned every. Oh, oh uh, we have two. We're actually doing three episodes of Rift Reaction this week, which is crazy. I did uh, the one that just came out today was recorded yesterday, uh, which has Bwipo, uh Who? Oh. Uh, who all is it? Hansama and then Kaiser is on it. We did these uh, series of interviews with them. We're going to do another one during the uh, the break on Thursday, but lots of cool stuff coming out there. Lots of interviews, except for tomorrow, because I only am getting one to two, because who knows? And then uh, lots of stuff hitting the, the channel. So please subscribe uh, and appreciate everybody being here. So this has been Hotline Link episode 192.